Hey guys, my name is Cameroni, and welcome back to more Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy No Fire Emblem Awakening. So, in the last episode, we started it off with the premonition and the prologue. And in this episode, we're gonna head to chapter one, west of Yilstool. There's st I still don't know how to fully pronounce this, but I'll get to that later. Anyway, chapter one, unwelcome change. Forgive me.
better stand back. Quite an entrance. What's your name? Yes. So, that. Our actual first real battle begins. First of all, right here, the game's gonna show us forts. Oh. Hmm, right. are those abandoned forts? I yes. See. Then we should make then we should take shelter in them whenever possible. No doubt they will offer distinct advantages in battle. Okay, so if you well, actually right here it says some terrain like forests and mountains will boost the unit's defense and ability to evade. Forts and thrones will heal units at the start of each turn. Not only that, but they will give a defensive bonus in battle. Some classes cannot move over certain types of terrain, kind of like mages in kind of like sand sand areas. And, and what am I trying to say? And th those are on, those who are on horseback in over rocky terrain. Anyway, so let's get started off right here with moving off the broom. I'm going to in this episode I'm going to speed up the battles by holding down A. I did a little bit of that in the last episode, but I'm going to be doing that for most of this episode. So there we go, Crom leveled up. And as you see right here, I'm moving them onto the forts, and there's also a little sparkly spot in the fort. A leader must never rest, never surrender, blah 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 blah. Anyway, 12 experience. So I'm going to move my unit right next to him, so we can do additional damage. There we go, and yeah, we were able to kill him off anyway. So. But yeah, I recommend using those forts whenever possible. I did move uh, my unit right, right over there on the other forts because I didn't want him to be completely alone. I want Frederick to stay out of the way of the enemy attack range because he has, he pretty much takes up most of the experience. So yeah. All right, so we blocked that right there. Crom came in for an additional hit. Awesome. And we both get experience because Frederick, he's very, very OP and he will take a lot of the experience anyway. Right here, we have the introduction to two new characters. Behold! Hmm? Hear ye! What in the... I'm 
I'm Sully. Yes, yes. So with that, we have two new allies in the battle with us, and two new characters for this game. And what a great introduction. Anyway, we're gonna get Krom sort off of uh, this guy right over here, since he's an axe bearer, and we have sword, and well, rather Krom has a sword. We get, we get to attack first and we do more damage, so there you go. And uh, one thing you're gonna learn is I'm gonna use my unit and Krom's unit side by side. That's just a thing that I'm gonna do because I'm also gonna end up building the relationship as well, and that Give some actually pretty good tactical advantage in battle. In battle, battle, battle. So there you go. Now we're gonna move Sully, our new unit. We're gonna have her take out this guy over here with a sword. It's all right. And once again, bronze a lance against sword. She has a stronger weapon, and she's also next to Crumb, so they can both deal additional damage. And we oh, come a little closer. You saw it there by the hearts. Basically, if you're in right here, he's going to tell you that he's an archer and that bows require you to attack. From two spaces away, so you can't come, so you can't be in adjacent spaces with an enemy and then attack, as it's telling you on the bottom screen. So you have to be from a distance, which, I mean, comparing, you, I mean, you could compare archers to mages, and I would probably say mages are better, but at the same time, archers they have their advantages, as we will learn about later. But for now, let's look at the range of attack. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna move. Yeah, I'm still trying to keep him out of the range of attack because. He kind of sucks ball experience. I'm gonna move. I'm almost called a, a Lisa. Lissa over there, so we can heal her. So we can use her to heal units next time around. And right there, that's an archer. He's gonna try to hit Frederick, but Frederick has that armor, so he won't take any damage. So there you go. I'm surprised Chrome didn't attack with her right there, but either way, looks like everybody's getting up on Sully. So that's what. But yeah, quite an introduction for Virian and Sully. And Virian is like definitely the ladies' man or sweet talker, I guess you could say. Not always so successful as we have seen, but anyway. But yeah, um, archers they can do quite a bit of damage, and I re I really, really, really recommend keeping Virian and leveling him up because don't do what I did. My first time around, I did not use him at all, and I didn't really have any good archers through my entire playthrough. So I recommend keeping Virian leveled up and try to give him some experience whenever you can. And I'm gonna give Frederick a little bit as well the experience sucking up thing that wasn't really a good name but you get what I'm saying he sucks up a lot of experience okay so I'm gonna move Krom down here he's gonna deal the first damage down here to the Wizard Chief which is the boss enemy the boss enemy the boss enemy the boss character for this battle so eight and four eh, we really have nothing to worry about but I'm gonna move Robin down here I'm gonna put him on the other side of Krom and we're going to attack him from here that will allow Krom to do some, to deal some additional damage as well, and there you go. Aww. And with that, we level up. And the returns heroes are Robin and Krom. Thank you. You may call me Marth. Really? No. Right. 
Hmm, very mysterious. Well, we'll learn more about Marth later. Anyway, more cutscenes, I'm gonna shut up. Welcome home. Forgive me. Crumb? Yes.
And with that, we met the Exalt, and we found out that Krom and Lissa are not just shepherds, they're actually the prince and princess of the realm. So, by the way, it is Yeastly, from what I've looked up, like, it's, or like, in the Yeastly, it's like, Elise, but I'd like to pronounce it as Yeelise, and, uh, like, Yeelise's people. Okay, it's really, really hard, the pronunciations. So anyway, right here, we're in the support conversations, and we have one between Krom and Robin. Right. Huh? Hmm? Hey. <laughs> huh? Hmm. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Hmm. Right. Yes. Okay, so we have a support level of C now, which means, well, we have C, B, and A. That means on the battlefield we can, what am I trying to say? On the battlefield we can offer each other advantage, advantages, and we can have more of a chance of doing dual strike, or dual attacks, and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, we have no other support conversations that what we can do right now, so we're just gonna leave that, and the only categories we have right here on the main menu are save and support. We can't really go into wireless, barracks, equip skills, or inventory yet, so we'll get to that later. But for now, I'm thinking that's going to be the end of this episode. So next time let's play Fire Emblem Awakening, we will learn hopefully more about the support conversations. We will go off to chapter 2. And, uh, yeah, that's just about it. So, thank you guys for watching. I'm Cameroni, and I'll see you guys back here next time. So, goodbye guys.